Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Crafty Concepts with Erin. I'm Erin and I'm here this week with the Creative Design Team. This is our official monthly collaboration where we are uh, bringing some sketches from our new 12 by 12 sketchbook to life. So yes, I did show this uh, last week on my channel because I just couldn't contain myself. But this week you'll be uh, you know, able to watch videos from all of us and we'll be picking, well, I'm not sure what sketch they're picking, so they may end up picking this the same one but I have selected this sketch to recreate today and what's great about these is that they give you all the measurements so not only you know it works if you're a visual scrapbooker but if you really want the precise measurements they're all there and it takes the guesswork out of creating layouts so you can just start putting them together so you can see here we have three photos on either page and it's somewhat symmetrical I am going to be documenting these really funny pictures of Dave. Many of you know Dave. He is just quite the character. I've got several cats, but Dave is very unique. So he loves to work out with my husband and I when we're in our home gym. This is basically a man cave. It's an unfinished shop, but we've set up a little gym and Dave is always in there. So I decided to take some pictures and document uh, the you know, shenanigans. This is him on my back. And I don't know, can you see his little paws spread out? He's making biscuits while I'm in a plank pose. There he is getting comfortable. He's just quite the crack up there. I mean, it's too funny. So this is Toad. I'll explain more of why I'm including a picture of Toad. But I have print these out to um, coordinate with these sizes and I'm also using the current mix-in collections. The mix-ins are neutral patterns that are designed to go with the current collections in the Close to My Heart catalog and I picked these because you can tell they're kind of neutral patterns there. N you know when I say neutral I mean there's no particular theme and we've got the blues. I'm wearing blue. The exercise ball in the background is blue. And then we've got a lot of just grays and blacks. So I thought this would be kind of a nice neutral canvas to create with. And let me go ahead and grab my bursa mats and we will get started with this particular layout. These sketches can easily be converted into single page layouts, but I am going to create the double page today. Let me just put down a couple dots so my paper stays in place. I Sometimes I don't show this process, but I just put one dot in opposing corners. There's actually one already on my mat there left over. If you're careful put peeling off your paper, they will stay and you can get multiple uses out of them. These are just uh, removable glue dots and you can use washi tape or whatever you want to adhere them down. But I like this because it's underneath and you don't have to look at it. So I am going to be building this on a canvas of white daisy cardstock. And let me get those lined up here. And then I will cut my patterns down to fit the sketch design. Let me just bring my photos in really quick here. I think I want this one over here. We'll do the first one of Dave because that's my favorite photo there. And then we've got two four by fours and these are kind of flip-flop. So we have a three by four on top of the four by four and then the opposite on this side, three by four with the four by four on top. Now you could definitely change this up. You could have two three by fours. Um, you know, you could do so many different things. A sketch is just a jumping off point. So this is the basis for the photo layout. Now with my mix-in papers here, this one is already cut into, so I'm kind of limited. I've got an eight and a half inch piece there by 12. I was thinking about putting the blue across the bottom as my anchor. There's a strip across the bottom and then they have the other pattern paper kind of going this way. And I do like that, but I don't have, I would need more of this paper here to go on both sides. So that kind of forces me to use the blue for this position because I don't have enough to make it work with that other paper. So let me cut these down and I'll be right back. So this particular pattern I cut to four inches by 12 and I could go with either side, but I think I like this one. It's a little bit more um, 
a little bit more black, less white. Let me bump these off here. And then I'm gonna use this one for my little dovetail pieces. Now, on the sketch, they're dovetailed, which I do like, but you could keep them straight edges if you want to do that. And I'm just gonna make sure I agree with the measurements. Sometimes I like to make my you know papers just slightly different. So that looks good. Okay, I'll dovetail these in just a moment, but let's bring all of these in. And if you look at the sketch, they have these big four by six photos, double matted. So I've printed mine with a white border, and I think I'm gonna bring in some black to mat these photos. Let me bring these in real quick. Following the sketch measurement, I did cut black mats, and I like the extra wide border. Now, we don't want too much white space on the layout. Not that there's anything wrong with white space, but you know, there, there's definitely a balance. So that is looking good. That really pops, doesn't it? I actually like the design as is. They have an additional piece of paper here that could be, you know, cardstock or pattern paper. The only other one I have from my mix-in is this particular paper, which is pretty subtle. It's a mink color pattern on both sides. And I'm not really liking all, see how they're all little patterns, very, very delicate patterns. I like to kind of mix a bigger pattern in with the smaller patterns. I think it adds a lot of interest. So I'm gonna search through my stash, I have an idea. I remembered having a pet collection in my stash and I knew it was bright colors. So it turns out the blue is going to work really well. This is a retired uh, collection. It's from my stash, but it's called Best Friends Forever. And on one side they had a dog theme and on the other side was a cat theme or is a cat theme. And this is a much bigger pattern. So let's kind of see how this is going to look. I'll, I have to cut it down, of course, but I think that makes, that's gonna be fun. That's gonna be really fun. And it's, you know, black and white with just some subtle pops of color in there. The other pattern paper in here was little bones on one side, which was intended for the dog. And then they had the little fish skeletons, which is super cute, but I don't necessarily wanna bring pink into this layout. I totally could, and it would be good, but I think, well, maybe. I kinda like this one better. So let's go with this pattern for now. I've added those two pattern paper pieces and now I think what I'm going to do is add some black inking to the edge, especially on this one where the white fades into the white. And then for the black paper, I'm going to sand the edges a little bit to give that some character. But we do need to dovetail these pieces. So on this one, the dovetail is on the top here. And these are five inches so I'm just gonna hold this up on my Versamat and then we'll slide this little guy under at two and a half so we know we are centered and you can make your little dovetail as deep or shallow as you like I'm going to cut this one and then use it as a guide for my other so they are the same so we'll just switch around here the wider the paper is the trickier it is to get a straight line just by eyeballing. You can of course use a ruler, but I think that looks pretty good. So then we'll just use this for the opposite side. So this one will face up and then this one will go down. Let's just make sure those are lined up nice and even. Then we can just follow along our previous cut to make these identical. And well, you can't cut it from the back. I don't know what I was thinking there. <laughs> so we'll just run bed and follow along and they will be close enough. You know, I like to ink up my edges. So I'll go ahead and get a little bit of that done here on camera and then do the rest where you don't have to watch the whole process. But my husband and I crack up because our cat's name is Dave or David or King David, if you will. And if you're in the fitness space, you might have heard or be familiar with the motivational speaker, David Goggins. He's a Navy SEAL, super hardcore dude, and he has YouTube channels and you know he's on Instagram and he's written books. So we joke around that Dave is in there crack the whip and he's kind of the Dave Goggins of the cat world and making sure we are not slacking during our workouts. It's really kind of fun having him in there keeping us company and just makes the whole process so much more enjoyable. Everybody needs a gym cat. 
I have all of my edges inked up and these are sanded and everything's adhered down. So now we can move on to the fun embellishing part. If you look at the sketch, they've got their title up here. Also a cluster of embellishments represented by stars. And they've carried that down to this area. There's a star and then back up to this corner here. So that's kind of where they suggest placing. And of course you don't have to use stars. I have lots of things I've pulled. I have long been watching Dorothy over at Scrapbook in Quebec and she has this really cool organizer tray and I've been looking for one and it's not exactly like hers but I finally found one at TJ Maxx with compartments. There's a lot of trays of small compartments but I wanted a big compartment that I could put stamps in or long embellishments like 12 inch strips or something. So what I did is I pulled some black acrylic stars. I've got some black and white dots and then these are blue acrylic titles. So the blue matches the blue of my paper and I thought it would be a good opportunity to potentially use those. The acrylic titles come in the Essentials Annual Catalog and if you turn to page 24 you can see they've got like paperboard faux wood grain and then these are the titles. So they're great generic titles that you can put on just about any layout. Sometimes I have a hard time coming up with clever titles so these are always nice. Memories, happy, life, the best, days, sweet, every enjoy in life you get the outline and the inline so you can kind of mix and match these use them independently or use them to build titles and then these are the acrylic colors so there's the blue and you can get these in the titles as well as the you know floral shapes there so that's what the title options are and then I pulled a whole bunch of stamps. So all of these are cat themed stamps that I thought maybe I can use. And I do wanna point out, if you didn't have a pattern paper like this one, that would be so easy to create with stamps. So just, you know, look for ways to use your stamps and create pattern papers like that. So I don't know why that one's in there. These are all my kitty stamps. And then this is from the current catalog, Remember This Moment. And they're just really fun scrapbooking sentiments, which is awesome. So many times we get card sentiments, but not always scrapbooking sentiments. So, um, you know, there's live in the good life. It's the little things captured memories, you know, things like that would definitely, uh, you know, remember this moment. I could use any of those on this layout. I pulled this stamp because I thought I could maybe use that for a title. Happy, happy, happy. And then this one, oops, my dies are in the wrong spot there, covering up the stamp. This is the in the moment stamp set. It's a girl and she's in a yoga pose and then there's a yoga mat and a water bottle. So I thought I might be able to use that on this layout. And then of course I got this because of title options also. So sometimes it's fun to just look through your stamps and you know, obviously I'm not gonna use all of these, but now they're out and they're reminding me to use them and it gives me some ideas of what I can use to embellish my layout. I am going to start with a title element and since this blue is a great opportunity to use this, I am going to try these first. I wanna pull out the word memories because it's kind of a bigger word. So I wanna make sure that it is going to fit. fit. I thought everyday memories or you know, happy memories might be something that would work. So let me just kind of pull these out really quick here. I didn't want to make you watch me sorting out all of those letter tiles. So I'm going to see if they fit in this space up top where the sketch suggests that we add the title and that is going to work. So I will go with this, but I want to add another element to it. And I didn't want to use blue on blue. So I know I have the black paperboard titles in here. And actually, while I'm in here, let's pull out some of these wonky arrows. We might be able to add those. And then here are my titles, there they are. So I could do everyday memories or let's go with happy memories because it certainly is happy. So again, this comes in the blue also. You could just do happy memories in the blue, but I wanted to mix up and not have too much blue in that upper corner. It's always fun to mix and match fonts. We could use a little arrow here pointing to Dave being so cute. That's what we call a weighted plank with a cat on the back there. 
I know I want to use this kitty stamp from my stash and there's already some cats stamped and colored in here. I was making cards with these plants from another set and I'm not going to add the plant, but I just thought it was so cute with the cats. So those two look about the same. We'll go with that one there. Let me tuck these away for another project. This stamp is so cute. I tend to use that one quite a bit. So I also want to use this little yoga girl stamp. I already have the girl, the yoga mat, and the water bottle on the door of my Misty. I'm going to go ahead and stamp those all at once using intense black ink. That way I can color it in with my Spectrum Noir dry blend markers. I'm not sure what exactly will make it on the layout, but this is going to give me options for embellishing. So if I need to stamp this again, I can, but that looks pretty good. You do wanna give this just a bit to dry before coloring it in. And I have repurposed an old happy planner as my swatch book. And I printed this out from the Spectrum Noir color blend chart from their website. I think I'm gonna go with the true blue. I have both, there's a true blue blend and the true blue shades. So we're gonna start with the medium of the true blue shades, which is the darker set. And it's so nice because you get three colors in one and it does help take the guesswork out of it. I am by no means a color expert, but this can give you dimensional looking, um, you know, effects without a lot of coloring abilities, which is always nice. I'm imagining the shadow on the bottom of this yoga mat, and then it's going to get lighter as it goes up. So I'm also kind of giving the edges a rounded look, which also complements the rounded shape of the yoga mat. I've heard other people recommend using this as like maybe a sleeping bag for camping gear, just to get a little bit more use from your stamped images. These did come with the coordinating die, so I'll go ahead and cut those out. And again, I'm not sure about the yoga girl, so I'm not gonna color her for now. We'll just go with these little items here. I colored in the water bottle with ice gray and light blue, just to give it a little hint of something in the bottle. I could cluster these up here in this spot. There's a nice little spot, and the sketch does suggest embellishments in this area. So I'm just gonna kind of rearrange them until they fall into a place that feels comfortable, but I could also place these kind of framing in this photo in this area. So let me bring in some other elements. I went ahead and cut these weights on my Cricut. I just typed in uh, dumbbells and these little kettlebells came up and a whole bunch of weights came up to choose from. So this one, I had this idea of like making the cat holding it. It was a curved one already and that is perfect. So I just kind of measured the size of my cat and then guesstimated and I got lucky, it totally fit. Of course, that's the benefit of cutting things out on your Cricut. You can make them any size you need them to for your project. So now that I have more things to embellish with, I can just kind of audition these around the layout. I cut the one kettlebell in black, and I also cut this little one here in sage green because it matches the color of my husband's shirt. So I'm still feeling like I need more. And if you look at my little kitty stamp, there's three different cats in different poses on here, which actually makes me very happy. So I went and stamped and colored those. And now we're carrying the color of the cat and the cat theme into each of those embellishment clusters. And it's really nice that there's three different poses that lends itself well to the design. I like to do things in odd numbers. It carries that theme across without them being the exact same cat. When you're feeling like your embellishment clusters maybe need a little something more, consider word sentiments. You'll see me do this quite a bit. Um, you can stamp them on linear strips or onto circles like I'm doing here. This one says, catitude is everything. And I think that text adds a, an element of interest to your embellishment cluster designs. So I'm gonna stamp this one in Bluebird ink just to add a little bit more of that Bluebird to this area down here. And that looks pretty cute, I like that. We can just kind of nestle this in. I've got an open space in the photo, I don't wanna to cover too much of it. And I'm gonna make all of these cats like look like they're working out. So I'm gonna put this one behind the little dumbbell there, and then we'll tuck the water bottle behind him. 
I decided to add a picture of Toad in the shop while we were working out, curled up on my yoga mat, because it's part of the story. She's a very shy, she's much uh, older than Dave. She was around for several years prior, and she's a very reclusive kitty. She spooks easy. I'm showing you that I'm using this little notebook paper here from the January stamp of the month for my journaling, but she would never set foot or paw in our home gym. But since Dave has started, you know, showing interest and always wants to be in there, he has actually lured Toad into the space. So she is 100% there only because of Dave's encouragement. So I wanted to document that on this layout as well. I am using micro glue dots to adhere down my acrylic title element. This is my favorite way to adhere acrylic pieces. It works really well. And then let me just get the S tucked into place here. And there is just a little bit of dimension to those acrylic pieces. They're actually pretty thin, but I have popped up the top of the weight with foam tape so that it is level. And then my little kitty can kind of sit behind that and it gives it kind of a dimensional look. I decided to add a little layer of liquid glass to the water bottle. This is a fun thing to do for any type of glass element, or maybe if I like to use it on flower centers. You could put a little drop on um, eyeballs, like I could do the cat eyes, and it just adds a little shiny finish to it. It's cloudy when you first put it on, but then as it dries, it becomes crystal clear, and it just gives it a really fun look. We'll tuck that right back in behind my kitty there. I have another stamp I thought about adding, so I stamped it onto a piece of scrap paper. And I'm thinking about this area up here. It says, not all of my stories involve cats, but most of them do. And I, you know, I wasn't sure, but looking at it now, I think I kind of do like that. So I may go back in and stamp that after the fact. Let me hold this up for you so you can see all the details. Isn't that cute how we just kind of pulled all those embellishments together to help tell the story? The kitty cats, the arrows, the weights for my cricket, and then the sentiment stamps there. And then we've got our yoga mat up top here. And I love the way that turned out. This was a perfect sketch for these photos. Don't forget to tune back in every day this week to see what sketches the rest of the creative design team has in store for us. It's so fun to see them put their creative spin on those layouts. Everything I use can be found in the description box below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you'd give me a thumbs up. The rest of the creative design team can be found here in the playlist on the right. And if you're looking for more double page inspiration, check out these videos here on the left. I'll see you very soon on YouTube.